my hair is out of control. But you know what? I better not take too much time trying to fix it because apparently people who take time on their hair can't take their jobs seriously too. What's up, everybody? I'm Tara Wellman. This is Bird Seeds, and the Cardinals are 6-1 and one this week. They only lost one game. I mean, they're still a game under 500, but whatever. 6-1 and one this week. Small victories, people. Small victories. As for the hair comment, if you want to know more about my thoughts on that whole Carlos Martinez hair pitching saga, head over to cardsconclave.com. Click on the Bird Tales tab, and hey, that's me. Guess what? I'm writing again for now. We'll see how long I keep it up. But it's there. Go check it out. Let me know what you think about the Carlos Martinez story. But back to actual baseball things that matter. The Cardinals, again, 6-1 and one this week. They swept the Pirates, then took 3-4 from the Brewers. I can live with that. However, I will say that there are still some things that are a little bit concerning to me. They won, I'll take the wins, but the way they got there didn't really solve all of the problems. Although I guess that was a big ask for a single week of baseball. What was good is that the starting pitchers are doing work, man. Let me tell you, you got a great outing from Adam Wainwright, another solid outing from Mike Leak, another good day from Lance Lynn, Michael Waka and Carlos Martinez had a few bumps, but got the job done as well. You can't ask for a whole lot more than the starting pitching, especially when the starters back up that good pitching by creating their own offense. I mean, a two-run bomb for Adam Wainwright, along with a couple more runs batted in on the same day. And then Sunday's game, Mike Leake helped his own cause and knocked in a pair of runs of his own. And that's all good and well. Trust me, I love watching pitchers who can hit. However, I think that the excitement from that sort of masked the fact that the offense wasn't really much better. Four runs go to Adam Wainwright's credit, two runs go to Mike Leake's credit. There were at least two, maybe three more runs that were a direct result of really bad defense. I mean, Jed Jerko's Little League home run is not exactly the kind of offense that you can expect to be repeated on a weekly basis. I looked up some numbers to try to back this up so you didn't think I'm just making stuff up at this point. The Cardinals are 27 for 138 with runners in scoring position. That's a 196 average with runners in scoring position. Not great, Bob. And it's not just not getting base hits. They have a 26% success rate of productive outs. That means their opportunity to play small ball and move the runner over, they're not even doing that well. I will say, in the last seven days, pretty much the second half of the lineup has stepped up and have done some really great things. Again, backing that up with some numbers, in the last seven days, Jed Jerko is hitting 429 with two doubles, a triple, a home run. Of course, one of those being the, the triple and an error that he scored on, but nonetheless, Colton Wong, listen to this, with two doubles, a triple, a home run, three walks, five RBI, and a stolen base. The top half is still a question mark. Dexter Fowler seemed to be getting his footing with a triple and a two home run game. He had a couple of walks, still six strikeouts though. And then of course the heel injury isn't helping his cause. Matt Carpenter has a double and a home run this week, but two walks and eight strikeouts. Not a good walk to strikeout ratio for someone who's supposed to be an on-base guy. And then there's Oledmus Diaz who was looking really rough and then got a day off and came back in as a, a pinch hitter, hit a big home run in one of the games this weekend. He has a couple of runs batted in on the week, and he also finally walked, which is not something that we've seen from him this season. So maybe starting to turn the corner there. But the point is, it's still a struggle at the top of the order. And that pressure just compounds on those top three guys. And I didn't even mention Steven Piscotty, who we all just sort of assume is gonna figure it out at some point, 
but he's still not hitting well either. Those three guys, four if you include Piscotty in the cleanup spot, they've got to make this offense go. Those guys in the second half will back it up with the numbers like they've put up this week, but that top of the order has got to get going. The other thing that has to happen, or maybe has to stop happening, is the base running mistakes. All the base running mistakes. I know that the Cardinals don't necessarily have super speed. They don't have a guy that's gonna set any base stealing records, and I laugh because they're not even gonna come close, but it's not even a matter of not stealing bases. They got picked off three times in Sunday's game. You wanna talk about killing your own offense, that'll do it. But it's not just the pickoffs. It's not just not stealing. It's the, as we so not so lovingly call them, toot blondes. For those of you who are not familiar with the acronym or with Ryan Terrio, that is thrown out on the base paths like a nincompoop, which is a really funny word when you say it out loud. We've heard for years now about this push to be more aggressive on the base paths. And I wanna clarify, aggressive isn't necessarily bad, but there's a version of aggressive that is reckless. And that is what we're seeing with the Cardinals. Now, it's not as if they're running with reckless abandon because they're not. They're just picking strange places to try to take an extra base or seemingly hesitating just enough that there's no chance for them to be successful. The question then becomes, what is the deal here? Why is it so bad? Is it a directive that's coming straight from Mike Matheny on the bench? Is he the one who's telling these guys when to run, when not to run, how big of a lead to take, or how to not get back to the bench? I don't know. If it's coming directly from Mike Matheny, it's almost as if he's trying to outsmart the opponent by not running when it's actually a good time to run, waiting until maybe you can catch him off guard and run in a different situation or a different count or a different opportunity with a different guy. If it's these guys who've been given the green light and are running on their own, then I think that presents a whole different set of issues. I don't know if they're just that bad as a whole <laughs> at running the bases. If there's miscommunication between the guy on base and, and the hitter at the plate, if there's a lack of trust one way or the other that's creating this moment of hesitation that is absolutely killer when you're trying to play the running game. And it results in things like Colton Wong basically having second base stolen three times in the same at bat, except that the batter fouled off the pitch. Then in the same at bat, the same hitter will swing at a terrible pitch and leave Colton in no man's land because he didn't make contact and it was a ball anyway. Whatever the cause is, when I watch them trying to play the running game, there's just too much hesitation. They have to know if they're gonna run, when they're gonna run, and then just do it. But they also have to be smart about taking the right opportunities and the right risks and not getting caught sleeping trying to get a, a secondary lead off of second base. There's always risk versus reward when you're talking about playing in an aggressive fashion. And I guess some argument could be that practice makes perfect, right? I had a teacher in high school who told me something about that phrase that I have never forgotten, and that is that practice doesn't make perfect. Practice makes permanent. So perfect practice makes perfect. What we've seen are not perfect attempts. They're strange situational running decisions plus hesitant execution, and that's gonna equal a lot of guys thrown out on the base paths. So aggressive can be good but aggressiveness without the intelligence to back it up is just reckless. I don't wanna to complain too much. Losing one out of seven is a lot better than winning one out of six. And the Cardinals come home for a long homestand at Bush to welcome in the Blue Jays, who are the only reason that the Cardinals' bad start isn't a bigger story in baseball this year. So shout out to the Jays for taking that one off our plate. But if you want more information about the Blue Jays who are coming into town, if, like myself, you haven't paid that much attention to what the Blue Jays have done so far this year, check out the Bunt to the Gap 
podcast. I will link it in the description box below. I've also shared the link on Twitter a couple of times, but I had the opportunity la last week to hang out with the guys from the Bunt to the Gap podcast, talk a little bit about their woes and our woes, and sort of set up the series between these two teams. So give it a listen, tell them that I sent you, and uh, let me know what you think. As for the Cardinals, they have a big opportunity this week to really close that now pretty narrow gap between them and the top of the NL Central just before welcoming the Reds back to Bush. Big series, some big opportunities, and some guys need to step up in a big way. Hopefully they do, and hopefully we get to talk about it next week. I'm Sarah Wellman, and I'll see you next time on Bird Seeds. <laughs>